When you think of animals migrating through Arkansas, you probably think of ducks or geese flying south for winter. But there's another winged migrant that passes through the natural state each fall on its way to southern wintering grounds. And yes, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission monitors butterflies, and one in particular, the monarch. Well, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is actually in charge of all wildlife. We are the trust agency for all wildlife species, and though you don't see butterflies on our logo, it is one of the things that we are tasked with managing. And the last 10, 15 years, there are a lot of populations of different butterfly and bee species that have been declining. The Rick Evans Grandview Prairie Wildlife Management Area in southwest Arkansas provides an ideal habitat for numerous species of butterflies, and it's an important stopover point for monarchs on their way to Mexico. Grandview Prairie is our largest tract of native prairie that's left in the southwest part of the state. Grandview Prairie is actually a blackland prairie, which is a unique prairie type. It's got some unique flora and lots of butterflies because of all of the native uh, forbs and grasses that we have here. Grandview is also important for monarchs because they, monarchs, when they migrate south, they tend to follow what we call the I-35 corridor, which is in Texas and Kansas. So it's more of a westerly migration. And so the western part of Arkansas tends to see more of that fall monarch migration. In the spring, monarchs really are looking for milkweed. That's the only plant that the females are gonna lay their eggs on. And here we are at Grandview, which has a ton of milkweed. And so it's a great spot for monarchs. And in the fall, what monarchs really need are the nectar resources. They're traveling 1,000, 2,000 miles to get to Mexico. They need fuel. So they're gonna stop where they can find nectar. And at Grandview, 2,000 acres plus of native forbs. It's a great spot for them. In recent years, the population of pollinators from bees to butterflies has been in decline. There's a few reasons that we think monarchs are declining. One of those is increased pesticide use, increased herbicide use, climate change. Um, a lot of farmers now are cleaning out their, their farms. They're, they're cleaning out all the weeds that used to grow between the rows, and they're cleaning out the edges of the farm. So all of that weedy native growth is no longer there. Um, another reason that we attribute to monarch decline is the loss of milkweed, especially in the Midwest and the Corn Belt region. We're just not seeing the amount of milkweed stems that, stems that we used to have there. Studying monarchs requires keeping track of their migration and population. That's where the husband and wife team of Mike and Anita Briscoe steps in to volunteer. They've been tagging butterflies for more than 20 years. We had a uh attended a science workshop at Camp Clear Fort near Hot Springs. And Dr. Jim Edson was one of the presenters and he presented a program. He was at that time the Monarch Watch Coordinator for the state of Arkansas. And he explained how people were catching the migrating monarchs headed back to Mexico and tagging them. We thought that sounded pretty interesting and kind of tie in with what we were beginning to do. So uh, he gave us some tags and we started tagging monarchs in 1997. Well, for one thing, it's helping out the monarch population, which has gone down over the past few years. They're trying to reestablish it to get it back up to its uh, highs like it used to be. And um, it's just fun to get outdoors. I don't hunt with a gun. I hunt with cameras and a butterfly net. But to me, it's just as much fun as somebody going out uh, hunting deer, duck, squirrels, whatever. It's just what my wife and I would rather do. For the Briscoes, the butterflies also provide an educational opportunity in the classroom. The best thing about doing it is we're both retired school teachers and we still go back to schools and we did this while we were teaching. We would bring monarchs into the classroom, sometimes in the egg, egg stage, sometimes in the larva stage, and we'd let the students watch the butterflies emerge from a caterpillar from an egg, then go through all of its instars, then form a chrysalis, then emerge and become a butterfly, then we get to tag them and the students we get to tag them. After the monarchs are tagged in Arkansas, it takes a little time before they arrive in Mexico. It's, you tag all the tagging season, which is in the fall, and then you have to wait until 
what, March or April before you finally get the information. Some years you don't get any. One year we had four, and so that was a pretty big year to get four of them. The Briscoes say they hope their work contributes to an increase in the monarch population. You know, it's always the thrill of the hunt and the pleasure when you get what you're hunting for. And so, and it, you know, when you're doing this, you're being, being like a citizen scientist. You're actually helping because you're reporting what you found. Well, they're pretty for one thing, just the fact that they're so pretty and everything, but the main thing is they're one of our main pollinators. If we're losing bees, we don't need to be losing any other insects. And so we've got to figure out how to save all of them. At Game and Fish, there's also a renewed effort to increase the amount of habitat for pollinators. And good habitat for bees and butterflies is also good habitat for many game species. We've really started to look at our habitat management and think about pollinators when we're managing our areas. Right now we're under a really big push for quail habitat and that plays right in with monarchs because they need the same types of habitat. They need those open prairies and open woodlands with native forb species and native grasses. And we're also doing a lot of outreach, uh, getting people to plant natives in their garden. Uh, teaching people about maybe not mowing everything, maybe letting some things just sort of grow up and be natural um, and leave some of that good vegetation. It's really fascinating to think how far they fly. They fly 2,000 miles and they go to one little place in Mexico, even though they've never been there before. Those individuals are finding that one place in Mexico, so that to me is pretty fascinating. It's so fragile and you wonder how it flies like it flies just the complete change it goes through from the egg to the larva to the chrysalis and then becomes something entirely different from what it started. It's just, I like a little miracle every time it happens. Mm -hmm.